What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Man, I cannot wait to get going on today's project. I think what we're working on today will be a game changer. It'll be the focal point of this entire build. When people see this bike complete, they'll look at this one piece. Can't wait to show you guys. Let's get into it. All right, check this out guys. Fork tubes are back from anodizing. These things are insane. That color is just gonna pop like no other. So the inspiration for this color came from the factory Suzuki team from like 2016, 15 when Stewart rode for them. Saw that color and ever since then I wanted to do that color on uh, a Suzuki. So this is what we ended up with. Got a little bit of touch up to do on these tubes, but yeah, I cannot wait to get these together. So I don't know if the camera really does this color justice. I might have to bring it outside to show you guys. But you can actually see the brushing coming through the aluminum or the uh, anodizing I should say looks pretty sweet now on this end they ended up anodizing the cap here which is a different alloy so it didn't anodize super well I'm actually gonna strip that back down to bare aluminum like the 125 over here this is how they came stock I'll show you that looks pretty clean there gonna strip that down and also this is my mistake but I didn't strip the old anodizing all the way down to that cap. So you can see it left a little bit of silver there. My bad, should have uh, should have known better, but I'm gonna clean up this cap and try to get this line a little cleaner. Got these caps all smoothed out, looking pretty wicked. What I ended up doing was polishing out the entire cap and then grab some Scotch-Brite and rebrushed it. Gives it a lot more depth. It's almost tempting to keep these things polished out like that, but it wouldn't, wouldn't last too long. If you guys decide to strip the anodizing off your fork tubes like I did here, just make 100% sure you get all of it off right up to the edge here. I also missed a little bit higher up on the tube here. So I definitely learned my lesson on this one. You gotta really take your time with them. All right, at this point, the fork tubes are done and we are ready to get these things back together. Now, in case you haven't heard, maybe you've been living under a rock or something, but when this RM250 is all finished up, I will be giving it away completely free to one of you guys. Still can't believe I'm doing this. It's absolutely crazy, but it'll be cool to see one of you guys enjoy it. So if you want more info on how to sign up, just hit the link down below in the description. Okay, we are ready to get assembling with these forks. Got all the bushings and seals laid out here. Now at this step, it's really important to have a diagram or a picture of the order and the direction all these parts go in on the lower tubes. Man, I still can't get over how bright this color is. It's gonna look insane on the bike. So for the seals and bushings, we will be using Pro X components been using these for a number of years and always had a good experience with them. So here's everything we're gonna need for one fork. We've got a fork seal bullet. This just prevents the uh, seal from tearing on the sharp edge right here. Gonna be using some fork oil, five weight, just to help loop things up as they go on. And most bushing kits do not come with this backup washer. It goes behind the oil seal. And so make sure you save this and uh, don't forget to install it. So we're gonna start by getting the seal bullet on the fork. Now this looks like it's for a 48 millimeter fork. So it's gonna be a little loose on here, but I don't see why it won't work. We'll give it a shot. If you don't have a seal bullet, you can use electrical tape or maybe like a masking tape, something to protect the sharp edge right here from the seal. I like to get a little bit of Oh shit. Anyways, I like to get a little bit of oil into the cap here, just so I can dip my finger and get oil onto the stuff as I'm assembling it. So first up is the dust seal. You'll notice this is bigger in diameter than the oil seal. And you wanna have this lip facing down. It's a little bit tighter with that oversized uh, bullet there, but Looks like it's working just fine. And then next up we have the snap ring that holds the oil seal in place. And now for the oil seal, 
this is very important to have in the correct uh, direction. You wanna make sure this lip right here with the spring is facing down. You also notice there's like a big flat surface to help press it in with. So get a good amount of oil on this guy on the inside. You can never be too generous with the lube here. Let's see, hopefully this one isn't too tight going on. Yeah, she's a little tight. Probably should have got the right size bullet, but I think that'll work just fine. Now the bullet can come off. And then we've got the backup washer. This is gonna go with the rounded edge facing down. And then all we got left are these two bushings. So the smaller bushing is gonna go on first. And then this one's gonna snap into this groove here. You might have to expand it slightly as it goes on. So as you're moving these parts around and assembling things, the snap ring will just flop around and might scuff up the tube a little bit. So what I like to do is pop it onto the dust seal, just so that way it stays in place here. One thing I didn't mention with these bushings, they can go either direction. You'll notice the uh, edge is the same on both, so it doesn't really matter. So once we get a little bit of oil on these bushings and seals, we are ready for the upper tube. You want some oil inside of here as well. Like I was saying guys, don't be afraid to lube up your bushings and your seals and your holes and your shafts. I'm not gonna regret it. Man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. This uh, yellow along with the brushed lug is just gonna look insane. So to slide these two together, get that seal started into the upper tube. Get that pushed in as far as you can by hand. Then we'll have to bust out the seal driver. Now the seal driver I'll be using is from Tusk. This is for 46 and 47 millimeter forks. This one works awesome. However, in the past I have used a piece of PVC pipe cut in half. I don't know where the other half went, but it does work pretty well. You just kind of slide it down the tube and hammer that in with uh, both halves basically. Really similar to this. Now to press the seal in, I like to have the fork upside down on a bench. That way it's kind of easier to see what you're doing here and gives you some good leverage. And like I was saying, don't be afraid to uh, throw a little oil on things. Get this, uh, it'll help protect the tube against the driver here. Just be really careful with this driver, it is metal. Get in there, press on it, get it going straight. And then you can either slide the hammer like this or grab a soft hammer. Now the slider might want to slide down inside, but try to kind of hold it up, kind of evenly tap around with this rubber mallet. And if you're slide hammering it like I'm doing here, just make 100% sure you're holding these two halves of the driver together. If they come out a little bit, they'll hit this tube and just beat it to heck. All right, looks like we have exposed that groove for the snap ring. Now, if you're worried about scratching up this tube with the driver, you could always wrap some tape around it to protect it. Now for the snap ring, it's pretty straightforward. Just compress it, get it inside of the tube there, and then maybe use a little flat blade screwdriver to press it into place. And when that clip snaps into the groove, you're gonna hear a pretty audible snap. Right there. Now this is a pretty important detail. You wanna make sure that clip is all the way inside the groove. It's easy to get it just halfway in there. And at that point, you're gonna have some problems down the road. And then last in line, we have the dust seal. Most of the time, these can just be pressed in by hand. That one slid in pretty good. Well, she's looking pretty wicked, boys. What do y'all think of that color combo with the yellow and the brushed aluminum? So here we have the cartridge assembly. Basically what we gotta do here to get this together is slide in the cartridge into the fork, install the lower fork cap, and add in some oil, bleed out the air. Then we can install the spring, the rod, the fork cap, and at that point it's pretty much done. Really simple setup here. So let's compress this fork all the way. Got the cartridge compressed all the way and just 
slider on it. Slide it until it stops. And then for the O-rings on the lower cap, make sure those are in good shape. If not, replace them and throw some oil on them. And it's not a bad idea to throw some blue Loctite on these threads as well. At this point, just thread it right into the bottom of the fork. Now you may need to reach through the top here and hold the rod, the cartridge in there as you're tightening this. And we're just gonna snug it up by hand right now. Now if you have one of the cartridge holding tools where you can reach it through the top here and hold the cartridge, now would be the time to torque the bottom cap. However, I don't have that tool and I'll need to torque this after the fork is completely together. So at this point, we are ready to add some oil to the forks and bleed out all the air. So we're gonna be using some Maxima 5 weight oil here. And the oil capacity for this fork is anywhere from 15 to 18 and a half ounces. And that's kind of dependent on how much bottoming resistance you want. So with more oil, the further you get down in the stroke, say right about here, it is gonna be stiffer and it's gonna resist bottoming a lot better. So if you're sending it off big jumps and uh, riding rough tracks, you may want to add some more oil. We're gonna kind of split the difference and do 17 ounces of oil here. So I've got a mixing cup here, ounces on the side, making it easy. We're just gonna measure this out. So this 17 ounces is gonna be the amount of oil we're gonna pour into the outer tube. But first we gotta bleed out the damper rod here. We're gonna add oil through the top hole here. Now you could pour it just straight out of the bottle. It might get a little messy because that hole is just so tiny. So what I've done instead is sucked oil out with a syringe out of the bottle. You wanna make sure you're not tapping into that 17 ounces we uh, measured out earlier. And this syringe will just make it super easy to fill up the damper hole. All right, there we are at the top. And then what we're gonna do next is grab the 17 ounces we measured out and pour half of it into the outer tube here. So half of 17 would be eight and a half. So that oil should be pretty close to the top of the outer tube. So at this point, you can just drop the damper rod into the oil and pull the outer tube all the way up to the top. And then cover the top of the fork with your hand. Wearing a rubber glove works even better because it seals it perfectly. Seal that off and then slowly push down on the fork. Now with the fork compressed all the way down, you're gonna wanna make sure the damper rod is all the way topped off. Then we're gonna go ahead and pump the damper rod and the outer tube about eight to 10 times pretty slow. So as you're doing this, you're gonna hear a lot of air bubbles coming out and uh, you'll feel the damper rod get a lot more consistent. So this will be the remaining eight and a half ounces that we didn't add earlier. Just pour this right into the outer tube. And you're gonna wanna pull up the outer tube as you fill it up so that way you don't overflow it here. Now we're gonna repeat the same process here. We're gonna compress the fork eight to 10 times to bleed out that air, or you can do six or nine times if that's more your style. So just go nice and slow, compress it all the way to the bottom. You're gonna hear some bubbles coming out. Push that rod all the way in and then pull it back out and just repeat that. Like I said, eight to 10 or six to nine, whatever your, your style is. All right, that's feeling pretty solid right there. So. Now all we gotta do is assemble the spring and cap. Now before we pop in that spring, we're gonna slide the rod all the way up. You wanna make sure this lock nut is all the way tightened down against the uh, spring guide. Snug that up. Make sure this is snugged up as well. Slide your spring on. Try not to push in the rod as you're installing the spring. We'll slide down a little bit, then you can just pull it back up. Next up, we've got this long rod that goes on the inside of the damper. This is called the distance collar. Just slide that on in. We have a little bit of oil that comes out. No big deal. We've got the spring seat and the fork cap finally. Kind of pull that rod back up, hold it into place and you can thread that cap right on. 
for the torque spec on the cap, it is 21 foot pounds. So we're gonna slide a wrench on the inside here to hold it. Looks like our spring seat's a little uh, wonky there, but that's just from the wrench being in there. No worries there. There we go. Pop that wrench out of there and everything will just go back to normal. Now, something I should have mentioned earlier, as you're assembling the fork, you wanna keep an eye out for things that just seem out of place. Say if your upper tube doesn't wanna slide smoothly on the lower or on the slider, if the bushings are getting bound up or your damper rod is really sloppy or just has a lot of resistance, you wanna stop and just take the time to figure that out. That'll save you from a lot of hassle down the road. Also, whenever you have the fork against a hard surface, such as in a vise or on a workbench top, you wanna protect it with a pair of soft jaws or a towel or a rubber mat. Just try to keep all of these components from getting marred up. All right, we're ready to pull this thing out of the vise. Slide up the tube, tighten down the cap, and just seal this baby up. Now the torque spec for the fork cap is 22 foot pounds. And also make sure you have some oil on that fork cap o-ring too. Now we can't forget about torquing the lower cap here. So being that I don't have the holder tool uh, that we would have used earlier, I'll show you a little workaround here. So just like when we disassembled this fork, so put the fork cap on a rubber mat or if you're a redneck like me, just put it on the top of your shoe to protect that cap and then compress the fork down and hit it with the impact until it just snugs up and then we'll torque it. Now to set the final torque, we're gonna pop the fork back into the vise and the torque spec on this is 40 foot pounds. All right, there we go. Now, if you have an issue with a cartridge still spinning as you're trying to torque this, take the fork out, put it back on the ground, hit it with the impact a few more times and just get it as close as you can to 40 and uh, then just dial it in with the torque wrench. All right, guys, that is it for fork number one. We just gotta do the other one, but this is looking sweet. Just gotta wipe it down, get all these uh, fingerprints off of it, but holy cow, that is awesome. And of course, once you're all done, you wanna make sure the fork compresses and rebounds smoothly and look for any oil leaks coming out of here. A little bit is normal just because of the oil used to install the seals. If it keeps leaking, just keep compressing the fork and eventually it'll seal up. Now the very last thing to do on these forks is set the clickers. So standard is about 10 clicks out from all the way in. And turn it all the way until it stops and then do 10 clicks out. And then once we have these uh, set up on the bike, we can kind of adjust it from there. But 10 out is a pretty good number just for the rebound and the compression. I'm gonna do the top up here. So the right fork is completely done, ready to go on the bike. So this is everything I use for the rebuild. Got some Maxima five weight oil, used a Tusk seal driver set, and I'm not sure what brand this seal bullet was. These are pretty standard, pretty easy to find anywhere. And then I use Pro X components for the bushings and seals. So I will have all this stuff linked down below in the description. Now, one thing to keep in mind with pretty much any brand of fork rebuild kit or a bushing kit, you don't always get the seals or the O-rings for like the uh, fork caps or the fork bottom or just like some of the O-rings inside. This kit didn't have it. Luckily, all of these O-rings were fine. Typically, those really aren't wear items. So that's, I'm guessing that's why they don't include them. They are pretty easy to come by though if you need them. You can just get them straight from Suzuki, you know, as an OEM part or Rocky Mountain carries them. So if you need that stuff, it is available, but a lot of times it doesn't come in these fork rebuild kits. Now, as far as anodizing goes, I had a local company do this here in Spokane, Washington. It's called Quality Coatings. And I wish I had like a color code or some way to reference this color. As far as I know, it was not an off the shelf color. It was something we had to kind of play with to get this color. So basically I just showed them a picture of what I wanted and then we kind of matched it up with some test parts 
and went from there but it was uh, pretty much a dead-on match to what I was going for so they did a super good job now due to the fact it was a custom color it was more expensive than just your standard color but totally worth it in my mind I got a pretty sweet finish here but anyways that's how I achieved the uh, Suzuki yellow on these forks now the process for rebuilding these forks is actually gonna be really similar to a lot of other bikes that share this same 46 millimeter KYB fork. For example, this 2005 CR125 uses an identical fork. Inside, it would be basically the same. You could use this video. Now, if you have a Showa fork like this, this is a 47 millimeter, that's gonna be quite a bit different and I don't think a lot of things would carry over. Now, there's also a lot of other bikes that share this same fork. For example, uh, KX125, KX250 possibly, RM125, YZ125, YZ250, YZ250F, WR250F. Uh, the list goes on and on. A lot of bikes from around, I don't know, mid-90s, late-90s to mid-2000s use the same fork so this video could be a really good reference for a lot of you guys all right enough chatting let's get to the left fork get it all buttoned up and maybe we'll pop them in the frame Sheesh, these things are looking badass. So they're all finished up. Last thing to do, mount them up in the triples and see how they look with those colors on the frame. These are just absolutely ridiculous, man. Exactly what I was envisioning here. I wanted like a bunch of neutral colors with the frame and the triple clamps, the swing arm, and then just have a bright, bold color stand out like this and really set it off. But yeah, that's exactly what I was uh, envisioning here and it's so cool to see it come together. I think once I show you guys the wheels, you'll really understand why I went with a color like this. Heck, you know what, why wait around? I'll just show you right now. Here are the rims. If you guys remember, these were just absolutely hammered and I was able to bring them back to life and get them all anodized and they are the same exact color as the forks here. So it is really gonna, really gonna be cool once this thing comes together. Now in the next video, you guys will be seeing me build up these wheels. I've got the hubs over here. All the spokes are at zinc plating. They should be back pretty soon, but what color do you guys think I should do on the hubs? So I rolled this thing outside to grab a thumbnail pic of it, but this color is kind of playing tricks with my eyes. It looks yellow one minute, and then I'll turn around and look at it again, it looks almost green. It's a really unique color, but the sun kind of makes it change colors in a way. I don't know, what do you guys think of that color? What does it look like to you? Well, I'm gonna call it a day out here in the shop. Man, I tell you what guys, I am just having a blast working on this RM and seeing it come together, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. So I'll see you all in a few weeks. I'm actually gonna get married next week. Gonna take some time off, just spend quality time with friends and family, and of course, some quality time with Haley too. Should be a lot of fun, but exciting stuff. That whole thing has just been a roller coaster, just the wedding being pushed back so many times due to all the stuff in the world, and it'll be, uh, it'll be nice. It's finally here and it's hitting me, so. I know what you guys are thinking. Cam's gonna go off, get married, and have kids, and sell his bikes, and it'll all be over. One of those might be true, but definitely not the other. So I'll leave it at that. But anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know how you like this video, and I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Till then, keep it prime.